can't believe I'm saying this, it's episode eight of Special Unpacked. Sean Vickers, I can't believe we're coming to the end. I can't believe we're here. It's nuts, isn't it? We've, we've rattled through this. I mean, I don't know. It's a very poignant final episode and final season, because obviously there's no more after this. So I'm um, very keen to kind of... There's a lot of loose ends tied up here. There's a very American way of tying up all the loose ends. If it was in the UK, it'd be really chaotic, yeah. really messy, nothing to be tied off. <laughs> That's really There'd be true. no resolution at all. But it's an American show, so of course there's, it's beautifully resolved. Yeah, they've got a, a skill for doing that, I think. So if you are new here, thank you for being here. Do subscribe, because we are the home here on this channel for Boys on Film, our regular movie reviews. We are also the home of Flick Flop, which returns to series two, season two coming soon with some amazing guests. One of those is Drag Race UK star Crystal. We have announced already, but there's some amazing guests joining us for the other episodes of that. And each time we're going to be doing a different movie that is resurrected, hopefully um, deciding on whether it's a movie that you should check out or a total dud. So that's Flick Flop. Yeah, they're movies. They're not. They could be more recent movies, but generally they have a spirit of the past. Um, and so, um, in my mind, they're often films that I grew up with, or and so they they hold a special place. And then when you rewatch them, you think, WTF? What was I thinking? <laughs> I was <laughs> young and naive. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick, though, isn't it? Because. If you've grown up with a movie, you're more likely to love it because you've got sentimental reasons for liking that film. Yeah, absolutely. So, back to special then, the last episode. It is episode eight, written by Ryan O'Connell, directed by Craig Johnson. It's called, and I've got to brace myself here because I'm going to start singing the song. Uh, song title, one of my favourite bands, The Sundays. Here's where the story ends. Here is where the story ends. But here's where the story begins. So it starts with Ryan doing that thing where... Um, he's kind of semi-stalking Tanner on Instagram and Tanner's doing the whole look at me living my best life. Oh yeah. Because, you know, that whole, but you can tell with Tanner's face in the pictures that he's miserable, but he's doing the whole like, I'm at the beach, I'm having a cocktail and with my new, I'm with my best Judy's, all that kind of stuff. My perfect Instagram Tanner. life. Exactly, that whole like living my best life Instagram view of somebody because he knows Ryan will be looking. Yeah. <laughs> And he's at his mum's, which actually freaked me out to begin with. I was like, oh, has he moved? Have I jumped back to series one? I was like watching the wrong episode because he's obviously staying there for a few days. Yeah, of course, of course. But there's some big, big things happening with Kim. Yeah. Big job um, decisions. So she's going to Listicool yeah. for the mega salary. They offered oh. her the number and she was like, that's the number. And I'm sure in the back of her head, she's like, that's going to get me out of that big debt K-hole that I'm in. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think she was like, okay, this is it. Listicle, it's the way forward. I'm going to have, you know, more authority. This is the move for me from Eggwoke. But that's the lesson, I think, for everybody, isn't it? Don't always go after the, the salary because you, you might be making a really bad, bad move, bad decision, which it yeah. turns out she has. It's, um, yeah, and there's a great scene at Eggwood where, you know, Kim's telling Olivia, you know, there's a whole thing about, you know, um, the move and how Ryan feels about being disabled in an ableist society. And Olivia goes, Olivia says, oh, I struggle too. I'm a redhead. Yeah, <laughs> I understand repression. <laughs> I understand repression. And yeah, you know, there is, you know, I get that. Uh, but it's just kind of like, I don't know, it's an probably an unequal comparison but yeah classic olivia like i'm in this too you know <laughs> <laughs> making it all about her now the thing about listicle is it's a bit cringe because it's very white cis het male oh my oh, god and it male feels dominated a bit like yeah diversity by numbers there is the the, the gay guy from the philippines who is very gay kim immediately feels tokenized as she is as is the gay guy about in, in listicle, which is like, and also kind of pigeonholed, like this is the content you need to write, you're a woman, you're this content you need to write, you're a gay man. You know, it's incredibly tokenized and not okay. So listicle, 
I am not reading your listicles. Sorry, Hans. Nah. <laughs> you can kind of feel her heart beating as well because she's so out of her comfort zone. She's like obviously thinking to herself, I'm so much better than this. This is not my kind of group of people that I want to work yeah. with at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, some big decisions with Karen. She's decided to sell the house because she's lonely. Um, Ryan is a bit taken back by the news, but then says, you know, he's happy for her. But uh, initially, he's quite shaken by that. Yeah, she has had it with Agora Hills, which is where she lives. I mean, she probably had it with that tomato bisque paint colour that she's applied <laughs> on the walls. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, she's lonely. She's had it. I think she tasted the rainbow in Carmel and she's going back. So she's selling the house. Yeah. We applaud her for that, I think. Applause, applause, Karen. Yes, go do it, love. Yeah. So Ryan makes up with Henry, um, suggests a date scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that could work. We we like Henry. We give him, you know, five-star rating there. Tanner turns up. Uh, you know, there's always the spanner in the works. Tanner's there. Yeah. I mean, there's this, and there's some assumptions made here because Tanner is glancing at Ryan and Henry and assuming they're together. Uh, Ryan hasn't has only seen Tanner through the lens of Instagram, and so yeah, it feels quite awkward, you know. But yeah, Henry, five stars, love him, mega, brilliant. And again, we mentioned on the last episode as well that banter. Well, it's not really banter; it's kind of arguing, I suppose. Ryan, uh, Ryan and Tanner, you know hitting each other with these spiteful comments and there's a comment about Grey Gardens with Tanner saying you know Ryan at home with his mum was like Mm. Grey Gardens we've all got a touch of the little Edie about us (laughs) some more than others definitely some more than others Um, yeah so it is awkward but I mean um, Tanner assumes that they're together Tanner is back with Richard I think that's the big thing what a surprise he assumes that uh, Ryan and Henry are now together which as we also know is not true yeah so back at Kim's uh, this is another awkward moment but you know in some ways Kim's mum doesn't think it is because she walks in on Kim and Ravi in bed and tells them that she knew all along <laughs> that they were having sex. But the funny thing is, when Kim, you know, when her mum closes the door, Kim's like, I can't have sex after that. <laughs> we can't do anything. <laughs> Mothers always know, and mother, <laughs> and she has known since 2012 that they've been bonking on Diwali. We want the happiness for Karen, we want the happiness for Kim. I actually want Olivia and Samantha to be happy too. And actually, Samantha features quite a lot in this. She's heavily yeah. featured. She's, she is looking very on trend. Oh my God. Uh, in- Uh, in this episode amazing we'll come to that later because she comes out with some brilliant lines as well at that very special occasion very special occasion so we need to talk more about karen because she's showing these potential buyers around her home and these potential buyers really upset her because they're like obviously making plans for what they're going to do like knocking walls down and building you know a rock garden (laughs) and karen is not happy about that no but i mean that's hard you know in any home when someone walks in and says oh I wouldn't do this or I'd change that that's their home that's yeah. you know and, and um, she looked, she's been there for a long time I mean, she's looked after Ryan for she hasn't been on holiday for 30 years so she's been in Agora Hills for a long time that's their home so like you know two hipsters turn, turning up and saying oh we're just going to level the place pretty brutal you know okay so the big special occasion then Olivia's wedding again applause oh my applause. god the wedding yes why was I not invited Olivia because <laughs> you weren't secretly <laughs> Olivia's closest friend maybe I would love to be Olivia's closest friend um, yeah no I mean the wedding just lols um, the Adderall spritz Olivia arriving singing here comes the bride <laughs> Next level. About herself. <laughs> About herself. I mean, it's just next level. I can't. I'm like, yes. Why was it not this wedding? Because that is effing brilliant. And as you know, I do want Olivia to have a spin off series. Please, someone write the spin off series for Olivia. But um, yeah, that was just. I was like in fits at that bit. I was like, why, when I got mine, why didn't I sing Here Comes a Bride to myself? <laughs> what made me proper lols when they arrived, there's that plastic, you know, Perspex box and they've got to drop their phones in. It's like, who does she think she is? Madonna? <laughs> I love it. I love it. She's Olivia. She's not Madonna, she's Olivia film. It's brilliant. And then of course we see Ray because, you know, obviously at this, this ceremony. Yeah. I mean, the vows are just so good about the car crash. I mean... <laughs> just it's just so good it's just so good the whole scene for me was an absolute highlight one of sorry the highlights of this entire season i thought the whole wedding was just bloody brilliant 
And when when Olivia's trying to hold onto the mic and Ray's grabbing it back so she can <laughs> she can do her bow and she's holding it. It's like no. I liked <laughs> it when they got married and the celebrant just went wives. <laughs> <laughs> so brilliant. So good. Olivia's skipping through and she says, Oh look, it's my ex. Hi Elon. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was so good. The whole of this scene was so well written. It was just really bang on because they really played into just the high camp that is Olivia. And I think if you're going to go to Olivia's wedding and you work for Olivia, it's a fine time to drop the bombshell that is, I'm leaving, which Ryan does with a plum. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I mean, there's, there's some really good bits here. Ryan, he has realised his worth in more ways than one. He's realised his worth in the work environment. And so he's like, I'm out of here, quits. And speaks really from the heart about how he feels about working at Eggwoke. But uh, he also kind of has a has a realization about what his relationship is with Henry, uh, which I think is really important as well, because he's a bit like, actually, yeah, I could go down a route of saying this, but he's like, no, I want you to be my best friend. And, and that's huge, you know, and Henry's like, I'll take it. I, mean, I love Henry's so I think, response. Yeah, really brilliant. So yeah, really quite hilarious. There is a deadly line here where uh, Olivia goes to dance with Ryan and says she's a top. Oh yeah. <laughs> whispers in his ear (laughs) like whispers don't worry i'm a top like very unnerving so good (laughs) olivia's own show please (laughs) bring it on so ryan heads back to karen's karen decides she's not moving after all for the time being um Mm. and that's where we hear well ryan recites that brilliant tlc lyric as well and karen just falls for it completely she doesn't realize what the song is she's like all oh, that that was this she says something like what a brilliant waterfall metaphor not knowing <laughs> it's so good. i'm trying to think what would happen like maybe if like one of my nieces decided to quote billy eilish or like olivia rodrigo i'd probably be like oh that's really poignant huh? you know it's just the same i think <laughs> So a month later, it fast forwards, uh, Karen is moving out after all, and then they say their goodbyes. And, oh my God, it's like, I'm, I'm welling up just thinking about this because it's I it's know. such an emotional scene. It's it's like Six Feet Under's finale all over again. I know. <laughs> when oh, they do the flashbacks, like, that's what gets me, is when they cram in all those happy moments and the memories. Yeah, and it's like, there's a bit of closure here almost because... It almost ends how it begins with the car accident. So Ryan's in the road and the car's coming and you have a, cl- a bit of closure here about the whole series going full circle. But it is mega remote, but only because it's not sadness. I'm moved in a way that Karen's going to do something that she really wants to do. It's going to make her happy. So it's a really positive uh, set of emotions. You know, It's more about being moved about the fact that also, it's, it's about her saying to Ryan, you're okay. Like I said in the last episode, you're okay. You've got this. Because it does throw you when the car comes along and you think you kind of think it's going to be another, another well, a different kind of finale, a different ending. But then you see that closing shot of him smiling and carrying yeah. on walking because he realises, you know, that the future is going to be okay. The future is going to be good. And it is, you're right. It's such a positive way to end this series because all along we've been thrown back and forth. You know, there's some really unhappy stuff. There's some really happy stuff and really thought provoking stuff. And then, you know, you get that closure, like you say, and it's, yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliantly wrapped up. Yeah. Lovely. Loved it. Loved it. And also Kim, Kim and Ravi, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah. Ravi's going to, Ravi's going to move to LA. Um, She says, she says she loves him. And so I'm like, Kim's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. She's got a head screwed I mean, Kim's got a head screwed on. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, that makes me happy too. Like, there's some very nice resolution. Like, I feel like Ryan's sorted. I feel like Kim's sorted. I feel like Karen is sorted. Who knows whether Olivia's sorted? And who will ever know whether Samantha is sorted? I don't think Olivia will be sorted ever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way we want her to stay. <laughs> and that's how, and that's the start of a new season of yes. Eggwoke, season one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good resolution, though, isn't it? Because we need that, I think, because we want more. Yeah. All the fans of Special, I'm sure some people watching, will want more of this series. But I think it's a, it's a good way to to end this knowing all that because we you know yeah. we're, we're happy with the closure of it more happy yeah. i should say yeah 
I mean, sad it's ended, but I'm also like, it's so, it's like a big warm, big warm hug. It's like one of those weighted blankets that help me sleep. Yeah. It's just Have like, you got you one know, of those? <laughs> no, but I kind of want one. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, it did what it needed to do. I think it was, as ever, really highly educational. But done in the most, done in the in a really smart way across the board. Not not just about Ryan's CP, but around you know feelings of like self worth. Karen's story about basically reinventing herself. Same with Kim about basically loving finding a place to love herself. In the words of Whitney Houston, Grace. I Liverpool. love that. That's beautiful. Like you know, yeah. And so that's what I liked about it, which is it's not as I say, it wasn't like. Ryan and then a load of one dimensional characters that act as devices to tell Ryan's story. It's real, it's rounded and that's why I think it's a I think it's a success. I have totally loved this series. I've enjoyed it even more than the first season, which I did love. But again, we've got more time per episode to enjoy the stuff. And like, you know, we've said on previous episodes, it's had that extra space to develop the characters and we've seen more of the other people along with Ryan. I think Ryan's great but so many other brilliant characters that, you know, are featured in this in this series. And we did, of course, um, with It's a Sin, give it a star rating at the end, much like we do with the movie reviews that we do on Boys on Film. Uh, and I'm going to go for the five. I enjoyed it more than the first series, and I didn't think I would. Oh, you really put it on the spot, Phil. <laughs> Don't I always? Now, I'm not going to give it a five, because as... As people who regularly watch this channel, I'm a very hard marker, but I would give it a very high four. So what are your reservations? Um, I'm just very, I'm just not fast and loose with the fives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fast and loose. I love that. I am not fast and loose with those fives, but it is a great show and is a very, very respectable four. It's certainly going to be something that I will remember. And I think more so because we've been dissecting it like we did with It's a Sin and obviously watching each episode more than once too because we have to for research purposes. But yeah, I've really enjoyed it and I'm, I'm glad that it has ended in a way because I think the good things do end before they outstay their welcome. Yeah, Much like Abba's true. career. <laughs> very true. It's so funny because when I was watching it the second time round... My husband was like, oh, you're weirdly encyclopedic about this second series. And I was like, oh, I'm in it. Trust me, I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've enjoyed doing it with you, Sean, as well. We've got Likewise, many more Phyllis. seasons of Unpacked, hopefully, to come. Yeah. We've got a brilliant it's been a pleasure. Knows. Thank you, Phil. And thank you all you out there. Yeah. Staring into your rectangles watching us. Yes. Um, I hope, you've, I hope you've enjoyed it. it uh, it's been a real pleasure for us. And thanks for your comments as well, because we want to hear what you think. Even now, you know, the, the series has ended for us and maybe for you as well. We want to hear what you're thinking of the series. What are your highlights, your lowlights? Are you going to give it a five like me? Um, but yeah, don't forget to check us out on the other stuff that we're doing, the other platforms, the other brands, as it were. Uh, Boys on Film. There's, we have a lot going on. Yeah. A lot going on. So stay tuned. And yes, yeah, subscribe away, because there's it's just non-stop. Yeah. It's non-stop. I need Check a lozenge. I need like some hot water and honey. I need a second brain. Just to <laughs> You have just reminded me. You often. never did your sing song, did you? I'm I just think that probably another spin-off. We're gonna create a new spin-off. It's gonna be me singing and doing the dance from the OA. Shall I pass the mic over to you now? No, let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> it's not fair for people to ruin the end of special with me singing we'll get a bit of the OA you've just ruined a lot of people's lives now do you realise that sorry about it and perhaps you know improved on the quality of some other people's I'm lives I'm going to think it's the latter I've improved people's quality of lives by me not singing good to see you Sean thank you everybody for watching we'll see you next time <laughs>